story from here at the Walt Disney World Princess Half Marathon weekend. And which races are you guys running? We're both running the Princess Half Half Marathon. Yes. And you've done a half marathon before. This is my second Princess Half, so I'm really looking forward to it. So I know what to expect. And what did you? How did you enjoy it last year? I loved it, which is why I am back, and I recruited my sister again and a bunch of other friends, including Carrie. So you have a big posse, yes. Very big posse. <laughs> but you were afraid last year, weren't you? A little nervous? I was terrified. I never thought I could do it. And up until mile six, I was telling myself, I'm not going to be able to make it. But as soon as I got to the castle, I'm like, I think I can do this. And I did it. And when you got to the castle, did you scream in the castle like all the other ladies? No. You didn't do that. I, I just I didn't want to exert any additional energy. <laughs> <laughs> I just wanted to get through the, the marathon, and then I left and exuded a lot of screams and yells. Wow. Right. So, so last year, you and I were running through the castle, and Katina, you were doing something completely opposite. Yeah, yes. Carrie, yeah. sorry. So you were, you were doing something completely opposite. Tell the folks what you were doing. Um, I was actually experiencing my last round of chemotherapy treatment after being diagnosed with breast cancer and a double mastectomy with reconstruction. So yes, a very different place indeed. That's amazing. And so she kicked cancer's butt, which is number one. And what inspired you to run a half marathon? Um, that's a really great question. I mean, Katina, you know, has been such an inspiration. She talked about how motivating and inspirational this race was. And I really wanted to take control back of my body. And this, I thought, was a good way to do it. It's been incredibly challenging, emotionally and physically. I, I never, I don't really think I knew what I was in store for. Sure. But here I am, and as I said to Tina and others, I am crossing that finish line even if I am crawling over it. So it's, it's been tough, but um, here I am. So as a cancer survivor in a recent one, after going through a major surgery, what has been the greatest obstacle for you? I think just knowing, knowing that you can just get to the next step, not trying to think too far ahead. We all want to be stronger. We all want to be better. Instead of just taking that moment and taking that pause and just allowing yourself to say, look at what I just accomplished and look at what I just did. And yeah. just be in that moment and not think so far ahead, which is very difficult for most people, including myself. But just not looking too far ahead into the future and really just dealing with things day by day is incredibly difficult but and, and challenging, and but every day it's a choice. And, and for cancer survivors and even regular Joes in the street have to do that. So you start in a place where you're you were sick, your immune system was destroyed, and now you have to build yourself up. What is step one? Take a deep breath. Yeah. Um, know that you may not be able to accomplish everything that you set out to do, and it's okay. Because you need to set goals for yourself, but they need to be manageable goals. And you need to, to do things step by step and be healthy and smart about it. Sure. And, you know, so for me, I needed to get my energy back. I wouldn't be able to walk from here over there a year ago without losing my breath. Yeah. And, you know, so to be able to now see how I do in this half, I mean, it's, it's pretty incredible. Um, but I, I really had some amazing people along the way, my colleagues included. My family's been incredibly supportive, my friends, and that's half the battle. You need that support system. You know, you can rely a lot on yourself, but asking for help is, is pretty okay. And have you guys won or run or walk together? We really haven't had the opportunity no. because I'm based in Bristol and Carrie's in New York, but okay. we had weekly conference calls where we talk about our progress and any obstacles that we face. So we've been giving each other moral support even if we're not able to really do it together because we're in different locations. That means so much. I train people virtually across the world online. I do online challenges or people just come to the website. It's amazing to be able to interact with someone and make a difference in their life from a state away, a country away, and thank goodness for the internet allows us to do that, right? Yes, it, it absolutely does. It's, it's very important to kind of have that motiv motivation. If I'm feeling low, she's there to motivate me. If she's feeling low, I'm there to do the same. So we've, we've been support for each other. Now, have you tackled this to walk the race, to run, or to do both? Are you run walkers? I'm a run walker, um, okay. so I don't know about 
Kira, you kind of you've done more running, I think, than I have. <laughs> yes. However, back to my point of being smart. Yeah. Um, or running smart. It's um, I am going to do run walk. I'm just again, I'm just not as strong as I thought I'd be, and. Um, a good friend of mine who's also a coach said, we're going to get you to the start line healthy, we're going to get you to the finish line with a smile on your face. Well, that's number one important, but she just said she's not as strong as she thought she was. I think you're much stronger than you know you are. The fact that you're here and you're doing this, this is an outstanding recovery. She did so great, and I couldn't be 
more grateful to be made by someone so special. So thank you, Mo. Thank, thank you. It's been so much fun hanging out with you guys this weekend. It's been a blast. Yeah, we should go hang out again soon. Definitely. Absolutely. Absolutely. All right. From Walt Disney World in Florida, now it's your turn to get to work.